yourself. Amen. So let's hear what God has to say. Let's hear what the Holy Ghost has to say. Amen. Glory to God. Psalm 34, 15 through 22, we're going to take a look at here. And it says, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers, uh, delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Isn't that comforting? I love those words. Today I want to talk about something extremely important. I want to talk about God's divine protection in spiritual battles. Anybody going through battles today? Any Christians breathing in here? Anybody pushing against the forces of darkness? Any battles going on? Come on. All right. So there are spiritual battles. We face them on this earth as a Christian, right? I believe the Lord wants me to speak a word of encouragement to you today. He wants me to uh, let you know that his eyes are upon his people. Amen? No matter what you're going through, his eyes are upon you. Amen? You're not alone. All right? The Word of God says that he neither sleeps nor slumbers. I like that. I kind of like that my God doesn't sleep. He's not asleep at the wheel. Amen? Amen? He knows exactly what's going on in your life, in my life. He has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten about you. Now, here's the deal. If you are activating the spiritual laws contained in the Word of God for righteousness, the Holy Spirit and the whole kingdom of God will work on your behalf. Now, here's what I, I got to preface this. Talking about, anytime you talk about spiritual warfare, spiritual battles, you got to throw this in there. This is the little caveat. Say caveat. caveat. Okay, here it is. We can also have a part in bringing trials and warfare, warfare upon ourselves if we opened the door to the enemy, right? I wouldn't be a good pastor if I didn't tell you guys that. Amen. So we need to be uh, mindful of that possibility, and we always just need to search our heart. Amen? Now, because the Word of God does say that chastening is a thing. Oh, I heard one amen out there. <laughs> chastening is a thing. Real quick, let me just tell you what that means. All right? Because the, the Word says that whom the Lord loves, he chastens. All right? Listen to this. The word chasten is uh, defined as this. A rebuke having a uh, restraining or a humbling effect on. Now, here's what I got to throw in. Sickness and disease and all the junk of the curse, God's not going to put that on you. God's not going to throw on you what Jesus redeemed you from. Amen. Hello, amen? All right, so chastening then is a, it's a correction or a rebuke for consequences of disobedience. So God corrects or chastens us. I believe, you want to know how he does it? I believe he lifts his hand, uh, his favor off of us for a time. You ever had that before? Things were going great, and then you know you did something dumb. Lord, I'm sorry, I did something. And all of a sudden, just consequences hit. And it's like, oh, I did that. You ever had that? Am I the only one here? Is pastor the only one saying he did this before? Right? So the word of God is clear that chastening is not, is not joyous, but it's grievous for a time. Why? Because God's trying to correct us. He's just trying to put us back in line with his perfect will. That's all he's trying to do. Amen? Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. You'll come out of it. You'll come out of it if you're in that chastening period. Do You know what? God's just waiting for you to say, you know what? Yeah, I was wrong. Lord, forgive me. I put it under the blood. Let's, let's get back to normal business. Amen? Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of our might. 
Oh, his might. Oh, okay. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your waist with truth, Uh, so you don't trip over a lie. Hello, so you ever hear that? Don't trip over a lie? Okay. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, above all, well, that must be pretty important then, huh? Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You know what the word supplication means? To press in. It means to press in. Amen? Is anybody awake in here today? Feeling a little heavy in the atmosphere up here. We must understand that our battle truly, from its root, is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is really not against people. Amen. The true battle is raging. It's a spiritual battle. It's against uh, Satan, evil spirits, and the entire kingdom of darkness. Now, if we don't acknowledge and understand that, you're going to live a real uh, defeated and miserable life on this earth. All right? You will never deal with the root of the attacks in your life if you're not aware of the enemy trying to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Okay? Now, here's the deal. Here, say caveat. caveat. People are responsible still. However, listen, here's how they're responsible. Because they give in to the influence of demons. That's why this whole world is a mess right now. People are given into the influence of the demonic on this earth. That's why all these things, these evil works, they're called the works of the flesh, not the works of demons. Why? Because people actually have to yield to it and obey that influence. So guess where the buck stops? Guess where the warfare can stop? Come on, amen? People, listen, we are not off the hook we're, we're not innocent of sin and rebelliousness. We got to take responsibility for our life. Amen? If people didn't give in to the influence of evil, it would have stopped in the thought life. That's where it comes first. That's why the enemy comes along and throws thoughts in our thought life because actions don't happen unless it's first up here. It always goes through your thought life. Somehow, some way. Amen? I mean, so that's where the warfare can start and that's where it can end by casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, right? So to be able to do that, you need to know some things from the word of God, all right? And that's why our thought life needs to be that filter. It's that sorting out. We used to have a carrot farm in Imlay City. I used to work on my dad had one. And there's someone, the carrots would come from the truck on a belt, and there's people on both sides, and they're looking. They're looking for good carrots and bad carrots. The good carrots, keep on there. Bad carrots, they're throwing them. They're throwing them out, they're, and they'd be sold for deer feed. So they're, they're, so they're sorting them out. That's what you need to do in your thought life. Thoughts come and go, and you need to be sorting them out. Nope, that's a bad one. Shh, throw it out. That one, oh, that's good. That's in line with the word. Keep it in. Are you getting it? So we are in dire need as the body of Christ of supernatural discernment and protection in this hour. You agree with that? Yes. Psalm 91.1 says this. It says, he who dwells and remains in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, the word translated almighty there, all right, that is referring to God. And that Hebrew word is Shaddai. Maybe you heard the, the, the name El Shaddai. Anybody know what El Shaddai is? It means God Almighty, that he is above everything. It's talking about his greatness and strength over everything, right? That's why we are only victorious in spiritual warfare when we remain in him, 
when we're led by him. Amen? Don't try to do it on your own. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen? We need the Word of God. So it's saying that he's the all-sufficient God. Say all-sufficient. So what is it that you need to put you over into victory today? God is able and willing to put, you, put that over, but he needs us to cooperate with him. We need to cooperate with him, all right? With God. Say with God. With God. I, am I am victorious. All right. So the secret place of the Most High is found uh, in abiding in Christ. You know what that you could say? Obedience. by abiding in obedience to the word of God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. So if you're following his commands, you have a heart that's truly bent toward him, you're in that secret place of the most high God and his shadow is covering you. Don't step out of that shadow. Don't, that's where bad things can happen. Anybody stepped out of the shadow before? Stay under that shadow, amen? We got an eclipse coming, right? We know a little something about shadows coming, don't we? All right. So remember, the secret place is not meant to be a secret from us. The secret place is a secret from our enemies, from the kingdom of darkness. Amen? Oh, I like that. So we must keep that line of communication open between us and our heavenly father. All right, so I'm convinced of this. I'm convinced that God is so gracious, that God is so merciful that he tries to get our attention when danger's coming our way. You agree with that? What kind of a friend would I be if, I, if, if something, there was danger coming your way and I didn't warn you of it? Right? A bridge taken out, all right? And you knew that bridge was taken out and you see cars starting to drive and you're just kind of letting them go. Yeah, go ahead. No, wouldn't you get in the way and say, stop? Think about it. I believe the Holy Spirit is always there to give us that discernment and wisdom in supernatural guidance. Go to John 16. Go to John 16. John 16, I want to look at verses 12 through 15 here. I love this passage here. You see, here's what you got to understand. The Holy Spirit wants to be active in your life. He is active. The question is this, are you listening? Listen, look at this, John 16, 12 through 15. This is Jesus doing the talking here. He said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell or the King James says, show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So isn't that amazing? The Holy Spirit is there to show us what our benefits in Christ are. And one of those benefits is supernatural guidance and protection. I love that. Like I said, the King James says that he will show us things to come. Now, the word show, so he might tell you or he might show you. He might give you a vision. He might give you a dream. Have you ever had a dream before that that protected you from something? Anybody ever have any dreams from the Holy Ghost? Absolutely. Or a vision or something. As a Christian, really, when you think about this, nothing should really take us off guard. Nothing really should surprise us in our life if we're maintaining that close relationship with the Holy Spirit. If we're in tune with him, we need to keep that line of communication open at all times. All times. The Holy Spirit is ready and willing to reveal every plan, every scheme, trap that the enemy has tried to place in our path. I don't know if you know this or not, but the enemy is bad. And he's trying to destroy us. He's putting things in the path, right? The the enemy, by the way, will send people into your life too that aren't supposed to be there. He, he's a counterfeit of everything that Satan, uh, that uh, everything that God does. God sends people in to bless your life. Satan sends people into your life to try to destroy you. So. 
Not only does he want us to know what the enemy is planning against us, but he's ready and willing to give us a battle plan and wisdom so that we'll be protected. Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And I want to look at verses 5 through 8. That's the Holy Spirit's job, is to help us stay ahead of the enemy. He wants us to stay ahead of what the enemy's trying to do, right? That's why when the Holy Spirit gives you a direction that you don't understand, listen, (laughs) it's not your job to try to figure out. Just obey him. But Lord, that don't make sense to me. Fine, you can keep on walking. Go ahead, take those 10 more steps past when the Holy Spirit showed you and there's gonna be trouble and consequences ahead. Amen? Amen? This is a sobering message. We need to hear it though right? That's what church is. This is what this time is, is to get in the presence of the Lord and to hear the Lord's trying to get our stinking thinking straightened out. Amen. Look at this. James 1, 5 through 8. And it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and without reproach and it will, and it will be given to him. But let him or her ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, uh, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. So I want you to notice that God is a liberal giver of wisdom. And there's one thing that he requires. Eh, We'll say two. He requires you to ask for it because it shows you're interested. And then it says to ask in faith. So that means there's a chance that we could ask, but it's not in faith. Why? You know what I think that means, not asking in faith? When you ask God to look spiritual, but you have no inclination to do what he's going to show you. Because you already made your decision up in your mind. I'm going to do what I want to do, but just just to make me sound spiritual. Lord, what do you want me to do? All right, thanks. I'm going to do my own thing now. Right? Anybody ever done this? Of course you have. Now listen to this. So spiritual, or wisdom is spiritual knowledge, spiritual discernment, and how to deal with the root of a problem. This is what the Lord wants to show you. When you ask for wisdom, Okay, this, he, he's not talking about earthly wisdom. This is talking about you're asking God, God, show me your perspective on this situation so I don't waste my time. I don't, Lord, show me your, your perspective. What he's trying to do is this. When you're asking God for wisdom, let's just break this down. This is what you're doing, really. And this is what God wants you to do, to have a heart for him to show you the root of the problem. Say root. There is a root to every problem. And usually you'll find the devil's fingerprints all over it. Amen? Look at Isaiah 59, 19, the, the second part of it, you don't have to go there, but it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Some people read that. You, there, there's different arguments about that. When the enemy comes in, that's where some people stop it. Like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift a standard against him. Then some people read it. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. I say, who cares? The point is God's lifting a standard up against the enemy. Amen. Stop arguing about it. Just go with the higher standard, amen? Amen. So the Holy Spirit is always with with us. He's always on guard for us. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber, amen? He's always ready to lift us above with that higher standard. Go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Let me show you something else. I'm telling you, we have divine protection in the battle. Are you taking advantage of it? Are you taking advantage of it? I'm telling you, these days, they're not going to get easier. The warfare is going to get worse. Get ready. Saddle up, partner. 
Psalm 91. Get ready, saddle up. We're going to ride at midnight. Here we go. (laughs) Psalm 91, 11 through 13, I want to look at here. Look at this. For he, God, shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. I love that. Now here's what you gotta know. So God has given his angels charge over us. You know, I love this word. God has given his angels assignments. Say assignments. Assignments. Over you to keep you in all of your ways. We are not in this battle alone. Listen, you might feel like you're in it alone right now, but listen, we are not supposed to base our faith on feelings. You understand that? Faith and feelings are totally separate. Ah, faith and feelings are totally separate, but faith will affect your feelings. It's almost like a paradox. Because when you have faith, it's gonna bring joy in your life. Are you following me? But those negative feelings should not dictate your faith. You getting it? All right. So you may not, may not see the light at the end of the tunnel right now in this situation, but just know, you got to know this now, that God's angels are at work for you behind the scenes right now. You are an heir of salvation, Hebrews Hebrews 1.14. We are soldiers for Jesus Christ on this earth. Amen? And with the help, of the heavenly army, the only way you can lose is by two things, by giving up and walking in disobedience. That's the only way you can lose. If you will just hang in there and you'll keep speaking the word, you'll keep believing the word of God, you're gonna make it through. Now, um, I wanna give you an example from the word of supernatural protection and of how God leads. Go to Matthew 2. Matthew 2. Now, I, I, I got to tell you, I got to hammer this point home. The enemy will always use people to carry out their will. The enemy, the, Satan cannot carry out his will. Demons cannot carry out their will without a human being cooperating with them. You understand that? It, it can't happen. So if people would stop cooperating in him, uh, with them, it would make it a lot easier. Amen? Matthew 2, 12 through 15. Look at this. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed from their own, uh, their own country another way. Then when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, Take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child, Jesus, to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and and was there until the death of Herod, the one who was trying to kill Jesus, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt... I called my son. So an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, hey, you guys gotta get out of town because someone's looking to harm that child Jesus, all right? And then after, I love it. So, you know, (laughs) there was probably time going on and Joseph and Mary were probably like, okay, what's going on here? Are we we just gonna stay here the rest of our life? No, God wasn't sleeping. He wasn't slumbering. In fact, That angel came back and told them, okay, you can go back now. Herod's dead. The one who was trying to kill Jesus, he's dead. Now go. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, yeah, but that's Jesus, right? That was divine protection for Jesus. Let me blow your mind with something. Go to John chapter 17 here. Oh, I'm running you through the word today. John 17. I want to show you something here. Don't use that excuse that it was Jesus. You know, frankly, God's tired of hearing that, okay? (laughs) All right, we we can't use that excuse here. Uh, John 17, 20 through 23, let's take a look at. This is Jesus doing the speaking. Listen to this. 
I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Guess what? That's you and I. That they all may be one, unity, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us, that there's a trinity in us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. There's the we again, Trinity. I in them and you in me, that they may be per, uh, made perfect in one, in that the world uh, may know that you have sent me and you and have loved them. There it is, underline this right here. And have loved them as you have loved me. Our Heavenly Father loves you and I just as much as His Son, Jesus Christ. So don't bring this trash that that was just Jesus. No, God, our Heavenly Father, gave up Jesus for you. So He loves you just as much as He loves Jesus. So when He looks down at you, when He looks down at you as a Christian, guess what? He sees the Son, Jesus, living in you. The same way he protected Jesus on this earth, he will protect us in the same way. But we need to remain and abide in Christ. Amen? Amen. Why else would the, one, the major themes throughout the word of God, why else would the major theme be don't worry and don't live in fear? Are you following me? Don't worry and don't live in fear because I'm with you. I love you just as much as I love my son Jesus. So the more you read and study the Word of God, you can't help but realize how precious and special you are to your Heavenly Father, all right? And that's why the entire kingdom of darkness is after Christian relationships. He's after local churches so much. They are trying, the enemy's trying to sow division and discord, and they're trying to murder the unity in Christian churches and in the body of Christ as a whole. You understand that? So why? So Jesus prayed here that there would be unity among believers. So where do you think the enemy is going to try to slap us? Right in the unity. it's It's so easy to see. When Jesus, when the Word of God gives us a command, when it gives us an exhortation, when it gives us a warning, don't ever forget, God's trying to reveal the playbook of the enemy. I want you to read it that way. When you read that, you need to read it that way. Oh, well, if, if, if Jesus is praying for unity, where's the enemy going to hit? The unity. So guess what? Be on guard. Be on guard. Because that's where it's going to come from. Amen? Go to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. You know when we forget to be on guard? When we fall back into the flesh. That's when our guard goes down. Now guess what? Now we look at our, 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 our battles against the people. Right? Now, Psalm 46, 1 through 3. Look at this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present. I mean, I'd be good if it just said present but very present? You getting it? Thank you, you too. I appreciate it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Now, so very present help in trouble. You want to know what that means in the original? And listen to this, an abundantly available help. An abundant uh, available help. He will never leave us nor forsake us. We need to take hold of that spiritual reality. Now, verse 2 goes on to say, therefore, we will not fear. And the very reason it gives us for not fearing is because God is a very present help in trouble. So guess what? You got to believe that. You got to believe that. You must believe that. All right? So call upon him in your time of need. Right? 
He's, he said he'll give wisdom liberally to you, like we read, all right? He will not fail you. Call out the name of Jesus in that circumstance. Look at Psalm 46, 4 through 8 now. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God, sh- God shall help her just as at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Don't forget the Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made uh, desolations in the earth. Now, so there is a river. The river is the presence and the glory of God that brings life. All right? All right? Now, I I believe that the chastening of the Lord lifts, God lifts his presence or favor for a time. I'm convinced of that. Right? I know it's not not shouting material, but that's what happens when chastening happens, all right? But in the trials of life, many Christians avoid and they block, they dam up that river. Instead, they choose to jump in the sewer of doubt unbelief, and depression, all right? So we need to allow that river of the Holy Spirit to flow on the inside of us. We need to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit, amen? All right, so that's the very river that will carry us and take us out of the trial that you're going through, all right? Uh, I want you to notice that it's the river that makes the city of God uh, glad, all right? It's the holy place of the tabernacle. Now, the temple of the Lord now is what? Your physical body. Who lives inside of you? The Holy Ghost. It's talking about the Holy Ghost here, flowing with the river. Look at verses 9 through 11. He makes wars to see, uh, wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Leah, we all know this one. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. So God breaks the bow and he cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot. Do you notice that God is our present help in trials and tribulations? It didn't say that you do it. It said God's going to do it. All right? So in other words, there's no weapon that's formed against you from the kingdom of darkness that will prosper. All right? You got to know this. You got to believe this. All right? Now, so verse 10 went on to say, be still and know that I am God. Be still. You, you, no, you, you can't be still unless you know that he is God in that situation. All right? You need to know that. It's interesting. Um that it talks about being still. And then it talks about the joy of the Lord. Nehemiah 8.10, it says, the joy of the Lord is our strength because joy and peace are fruit or a byproduct of our faith in him. Trust always will bring that, amen? Now go to Psalm 18. Let me run you through something else. We're doing good on time. Don't worry, you'll get to your restaurant on time. <laughs> You guys love that one. Okay, great. Um, Psalm 18, 1 through 3, let's take a look at. And it says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Now, again, so this psalm has given us more evidence of God's saving and delivering power from our enemies. Verse three, the psalmist said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. It takes your free will to call upon the Lord. Did you ever notice that? It's just not automatic. It takes your free will to call upon the Lord. And guess what? When you call upon the Lord, 
According to James 4, 8, it says that you are drawing nigh to God and then he draws nigh to you. You make the first move and he comes more, forward more. Amen? So when you call upon the Lord, you're taking that first step and you're asking God to intervene in that situation. Now, here we go. So it's because of your faith, because you believed enough to even acknowledge him in that circumstance, to acknowledge him in that trial. You activated the spiritual law of faith, and God loves faith. Amen? I want you to notice this, that the connection that verse 3 makes between call up, calling upon the Lord and worthy to be praised, listen to this. The word of God there, you got to catch this now. Don't bump your neighbor, wake him up right now. Good, thanks. The Word of God is revealing that calling upon the Lord should involve praising God. Calling upon the Lord involves praising God. Not a faithless calling in Him, but rather a faith-filled declaration of praise to Him. You know what it's saying is? In your trial, start praising Him because it'll shift it to a positive direction. It'll shift your thought life to a positive direction. And I believe this is what it's talking about when it said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Because everything in the natural was negative for David in this situation he encountered. But it said he started encouraging himself. I believe he started talking about all the characteristics of God. That he, is, that he is a deliverer. He is my almighty God. He is the only one that can deliver me out of this. You know what? Here's what he did. David started preaching to himself. That's what encouraging yourself in the Lord is. David started preaching to himself. So go with me to Isaiah. I'm getting close to being done here, real close. Uh, Isaiah 55. All right, Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, I want to look at. And it says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So Now, look at this. Notice the shift here. He gives an example and he shifts it. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in that thing which I sent it. So the word of God says in verse 10 that as the rain and snow, it's talking about rain and snow coming down. And it's talking about how it turns into water so it can be a blessing to the earth. Right? So it can be a benefit to you, right? And then verse 11 immediately shifts and makes that switch about water being a blessing on the earth to the word of God coming forth out of his mouth. That would be a blessing to you. So what is it saying? The word of God, by the way, is the word of God, right? It's not the word of man, it's the word of God. So the scriptures are the word of God, the, God is the author. The Holy Ghost is the author, right? So when we speak the word of God, the promises of God, just like the rain and snow, it will not return void. It will accomplish something. It will accomplish the mission. Listen, it will manifest results and blessings in that situation that you are encountering. But here's what you got to need. Here's what you need to know. If you're taking notes, write this sentence down right now. Here it goes. The word of God must be sent out with purpose. God is a God of purpose. That's why I tell you guys, when you pray, pray with details involved. Don't just be general. No, God, be very specific. Say specific. specific. The word of God must be sent out with purpose. Why? Because God knows your heart. He knows if you're flinging something out just faithlessly, or he knows if you're sending it out with purpose. 
You're taking his word seriously. And guess who else knows if you're taking the word of God seriously or not? The kingdom of darkness. They know. They know if you're just flinging spaghetti on a wall or if you mean business. You need to mean business. When you're in warfare, you better mean business. You better believe our military, when they have a, a, a something going on, they're going in with purpose. Right? Unless Joe Biden's at the helm. That's for another topic and another, another day. Right? My, my, my. Making a whole other message on that one right now. You don't leave America's weapons for the enemy to take. That's absolute treason. Hello. All right, anyways, I'll carry on. Am I turning a different shade of red right now? Okay. Okay, great. (laughs) So, back on task. The word of God must be sent out with purpose, right? I want you to notice it says, it will prosper in the thing which I sent it. All right? So, This is the importance of being sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I kind of talked about this a week or two ago, right? Uh, So you got to know, the Holy Spirit is trying to prompt you to not only draw strength. When the Holy Spirit gives you a scripture in the midst of a trial, he not only wants you to take hold of it, to war with it, to draw strength on the inside, but he wants you to speak the scripture out loud to your situation, and that's called a rhema word. You know, sometimes that rhema word can come when you're in the midst of a trial and you open the word and you start reading and it's like the, the ink on the page jumped out at you. Like it got illuminated. That's the Holy Spirit showing you. That's the scripture I want you to stand on. You getting it? Sometimes you might get a rhema word by hearing a sermon. You, I might be up here speaking and all of a sudden, wow, just it, the, a scripture just slaps you in the face. In the Holy Spirit saying, use that one in your trial. But I guarantee you that the Holy Spirit is speaking scriptures to you in the midst of your trial. And the question is, are you listening? Amen? My last passage, and I want to end on this, is Psalm. I want to, I want to close by speaking a blessing over you in this place. Go to Psalm 20. Psalm 20. I love this. Psalm 20. I want to read this real quick, and then I want to speak a blessing over everyone here and those watching and listening around the world right now. Psalm 20, 1 through 9. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. This is beautiful. Listen to this. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept all your burnt sacrifice. Selah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed, and he will answer him uh, from his holy heaven with his saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, may the king answer us when we call. So here it is. Let's stand up in this place right now. And I want to speak this. May you not stumble over trials but rather use them as stepping stones to draw closer to your heavenly Father and to refine, strengthen your faith. May his face shine upon you as you abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the joy of his salvation overtake, strengthen, and sustain you in this life until you go to live with him forever in glory. Amen? Amen. Prayer team, come forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for this word. Lord, I thank you we have divine protection in the battle. Now, maybe there's someone in here you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. 
You're on the outside and you're looking in. You must make Jesus Lord of your life. And the Bible says today is the day of salvation. In other words, when you have that opportunity, while the Holy Spirit is nudging you on the inside, now's the time to do it. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, come forward today. Now, equally as important, equally as important, you need to rededicate your life to the Lord. If you were to die right now and you don't know that you would go to heaven, for eternity. You lost that confidence. You need to come forward and pray with a prayer team member and just settle it today. Rededicate to the Lord. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit baptism and pray in other tongues and learn about that, come forward today. If you need prayer for healing or anything else, come on down. Visitors, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. And everybody, we have things going on through the whole week, uh, almost, almost every day, except for Monday or Saturday. I, not Saturday this week. So, but God bless you all. If you need to talk, you know where to find me. I love you all. Have a great week.